Hi, I'm Darby Santiago, and my part is to discuss about uh, binary scales. At the end of this video, uh, you should be able to describe what a binary scale is, discuss its advantages and disadvantages, critique survey questionnaires with binary scales, and formulate recommendations in improving binary scale survey forms. A binary scale is an example of a nominal scale, and these nominal scales are used for variables or indicators that have mutually exclusive attributes. For example, you can have gender. The choices are a male or a female. Um, another example would be hospital level, which could be primary, secondary, or tertiary. Another would be religion, which can have two, three, or four, or more uh, types of um, choices that you can have. So, but when we assign a unique number to each of these variables, the number does not really mean anything. So statistically, we can only use uh, the mode as a measure of central tendency in nominal scales. Binary scales are those that consist of uh, binary items that assume one of two possible values or outcomes. For example, you can have success or failure, yes or no, true or false, and so on and so forth. You can have disease or no disease. For employment, you can have part-time or full-time. However, um, you can add, uh, if employment status item is modified to allow more than two possible values, such as unemployed or retired, it is no longer a binary scale, but it will remain as a nominal scale item. If you decide to use binary scales in your survey forms, uh, these are the advantages. You get the right information. It's exact. It's either a yes or a no, have or have not. It is more appealing to the... Um, to the client, no, um, so so that there is decreased survey refusal. If they see this, there are just two choices. It's faster, and if it's fast, no, it's less prone to um, break off rate, no, when they stop in the middle and then just return their survey form to you. It is also less prone to skipping questions, uh, wherein they answer one, two, three, skips four, or five, okay, and um, it increases the. Um, response to open-ended questions at the end of your survey if you have them. No? The quality and validity of responses are also maintained. In fact, a study comparing binary questions to the seven-point answer format in evaluating beliefs relating to fast food brands show that binary scale questions are superior in terms of stability, concurrent validity, and speed of completion. The main disadvantage of a binary scale is that there is loss of information. Some questions might be better off using five to seven scale answers. Uh, for example, I feel good about my job. I get along well with others at work. Or today I feel healthy. These questions you can answer actually with a yes or a no, but it might be better if you ask them if they strongly disagree, somewhat disagree, they're neutral or somewhat agree or strongly agree with your questions. Another example would be when you ask, when you want to classify a patient as hypertensive or non-hypertensive. Instead of using their, um, the categorical scale of their blood pressure in itself. No? So the, the question here is like, what is the difference of a patient with 139 blood pressure who is labeled as non-hypertensive to a patient with a blood pressure of 141 who is now labeled as hypertensive. So th there is a little bit of a loss of information. So depending on the, your, the objectives of your study, you can use the either binary scale or five to seven point scale. Um, in this example of a food server questionnaire, they decided to use a binary scale. However, if you look at question number three, uh, how have you increased your fat intake? You can actually, if you want, you can actually ask the patient um, how much they have uh, increased their fat intake or how much they have decreased. So it can be highly increased, moderately increased, neutral, the same, and so on and so forth. 
This next slide shows uh, another case of a binary scale. It's a little bit off, but I want to show this to you because um, I want to show that binary scales can be used to measure a political, uh, a particular construct by using few to several indicators that will characterize that construct. For example, let us take the construct of political activism. Uh, we would like to know if a person is just a so-so activist or a hardcore activist. Here we create six items which indicates or describe, describes activism. Um, each item in the scale is a binary item like, have you ever written a letter to a public official? Have you ever signed a political petition? And uh, have you ever donated money to a political cause? And so on and so forth. And the total number of yes indicated by a respondent can be used as, in over, as an overall measure of that person's political activism. Uh, a score of six in this case would define a hardcore political activist. Let us now move further on and examine an actual paper which employed a questionnaire. This paper was published in the Philippine Journal of Ophthalmology in 2019 and entitled Survey on the Knowledge, Attitudes, and Practice Patterns of Ophthalmologists in the Philippines on the Diagnosis of and Management of Dry Eye Disease. Uh, its objective is to determine the knowledge, attitudes, and practice patterns of ophthalmologists um, on the diagnosis and management of dry eye disease through a survey using an online questionnaire. Um, they collected data on the knowledge on the definition, symptoms, the diagnostic materials, as well as their management of dry eye disease. However, at the start of the survey form, they collected information regarding the setting and characteristic of the respondents' practice, their years of practice, the, their, sub, their field of practice, their subspecialization, and the number of dry eye patients uh, that they see weekly. No? I was hoping that this study would correlate uh, these uh, information, demographics, to how they um, define and they ma how they manage the patients. The next two slides shows uh, the demographics that the study collected from the respondents. Um, they collected the age, which had four categories. The gender and the classification, which is uh, the classification is uh, whether they are diplomate or non-diplomate, was a binary scale. The setting of clinical and classification of practice had about uh, 10 sub-choices. Um, okay. The choices for specialization had uh, nine, um, nine choices. And um, the years in practice was divided into about six choices. And the number of patients they see their week is, uh, was also subdivided. Um, I want you to look at the data that they were able to collect here. There was um, none. There was no dominant numbers seen. The next three slides will show you the respondents' knowledge on the definition of dry eye, the symptoms of dry eye, and uh, their their uh, diagnostic uh, modalities for dry eye. Uh, as you can see in this slide, their definition. Um, they are, they, sh they are supposed to check no, whether uh, there's tear deficiency, ex excessive evaporation, damage to ocular surface, etc., etc. Here, um, they are supposed to say what they are looking for in patients with dry eye, like feeling of dryness, itching, burning, discomfort, pain, or foreign body sensation and so on and so forth. No? And then in this slide, uh, the uh, uh, ask them what diagnostic tests or do they use? Like, they, do they rely on patient symptoms only? Or do they also include dry, a dry eye questionnaire? Do they examine the tear meniscus height? The tear breakup time? Uh, how about fluorescent staining? Do, you, do they use it to diagnose, etc., etc.? So they put this online and ask uh, the entire membership of the Philippine Academy of Ophthalmology 
and lo and behold, only 16% resp responded to the survey, and most respondents came from Metro Manila. Um, most respondents were also below 55 years old, since these were the ones who were most likely to be internet literate, and uh, among the subspecialists, most were external disease and cornea specialists. The, this was expected uh, since they are probably more interested in the survey and knew more about the survey topic. Um, sadly, the study was not able to correlate the demographics of the respondents to their knowledge on definition symptoms diagnostic and diagnosis, as well as the preferred management practice for dry eye. I think the reason for this is that they had too many choices for uh, the demographics part. Um, they wanted to be more accurate, but in the end, they were not able to utilize these data to correlate them with the, their other findings. For example, it, it would have been better to segregate, just segregate them as city-based or rural-based, or below 50 and above 50, or whether they are a cornea specialist versus a non-cornea specialist. Um, it would have been better also if to know if they their practice was uh, below 15 years or above 15 years because uh, um, we would like to know if there's a gap of knowledge you know? and um, or you can ask them whether it's just private practice or government practice purely government or mixed because it's uh, there's very few ophthalmologists anyway who practice uh, pure government uh, practice practice. So in summary, binary scales are nominal scales consisting of binary items that assume one or two possible values or outcomes can be used in measuring constructs. And we can use it to reduce the amount of missing data as a result of item non-response and refusal to answer the, sur the survey and um, reduce also early breakoff rates. Its main disadvantage is the loss of information. So we need to be critical as to when and where to use binary scales so that we can harness its advantages. Thank you for listening.